Hey guys, Urban Reddit here, back with another subreddit series. Today we are doing malicious compliance. I've got three stories for you today, so let's get right into it, shall we? This one's called Rude Lady Gets the Ham She Deserves, Not the Ham She Wants. No prima ball because there's no need. Rude woman equals rude woman. Me equals me. Manager equals manager. Well, that's easy to remember. I worked in a deli, although this is a deli inside a grocery store, and we did cook meat. This was a really, there was this really rude lady who always ordered the same salon smoked ham, but she would always call it plain ham. Now we did have a plain ham, no extra flavour, just ham, salt and water, but she wanted a smoked ham. She was probably mid forties, always dressed to the nines for the Mia Shopper trip, WTF, with designer sunglasses and a fancy hat. Inside the store, where, surprise, there's no sun, she always moaned when there was a line at the deli counter, which was always because she did all her grocery shopping at the weekend. One day, after telling her repeatedly this smoked ham is in fact not plain ham, when she made her weekly appearance, it was during a huge customer rush. I saw her jar, uh, so I saw her join the line, six people deep with two people working the counter, the horror, uh, I bet it must be as well, and get progressively more angry as she had to wait five minutes until I helped her. We're talking, foot tapping, muttering under her breath, looking at her watch, dramatic size, the works. Oh god, don't you just hate those people? I uh, keep an eye on her while I and my co-worker are clearly rushing to help the line go down. Finally she gets to me and before I can even finish my first sentence, how how can I help? I get cut off. Rude woman, about time, give me half a pound of plain ham now. I know what she wants, but what she asks for is on sale. In that case, right in front of her, under her very nose and since it was on sale, I pre-sliced a tray of it and it was ready to go. Plausible, plausible deniability, I reached down, grabbed half a pound of meat, Throw it in a ziplock baggie for her, weighed it, slammed the sticker on it, handed her, and then before she can realise her mistake, I say, Thank you for shopping with Maya. I think that's how it's pronounced, I don't know. Have a great day. With my brightest customer service smile, I immediately turn to the next customer. Hi, how can I help you today? Because I'm still putting on that one man is busy and I'm working hard show for the cameras and managers. Rude woman gets this look like. A uh, rude woman gets this look like I just took her crap in her baggie and handed it to her. While I'm helping the current customer and she stomps back over to me and interrupts me. Excuse me, what is this? Confused look on my face, half a plain of plain ha half a pound of plain ham that you asked for. I replied as I walked back to the customer I was helping, finished her transaction and started another. I can see that she's still waiting for me to come back to get to her out of the corner of my eye, but she made it very clear that she wanted, that she was in a hurry and as I've already given it to her, she didn't need my further assistance, she gets mad, silently, just watching as I cheerfully help all the other customers. The line doesn't die down, she stomps off to the customer service desk and returns with not my manager, but the entire store manager about 15 minutes later. Wow. <laughs> He comes into the delis and says, This lady's been out there and said you gave her the wrong order. With an incident look on my face, I remember her. She was rude in line at the counter. The extent of her order was, and I quote, Get me half a pound of plain ham now. I gave her the half a pound of ham. It is on sale this week. And the entire transaction took under 30 seconds. Because we already have plain ham sliced for this, for the week the, on sale on plain ham, I was super polite to her. Manager rolls his eyes and says, she says she didn't want this ham, she wants the other plain ham. I replied, we literally only sell one brand of plain ham, we don't have any other plain hams, that's it, and it's on sale this week. He walks back out behind the counter and starts to explain to her how wrong she is. When she starts pointing to the sell them smoked ham, smoked house ham that she really wanted, she is, fu she is fu furious, red faced, Throwing a quiet little tantrum as the manager returns to me, she says she wants that plain ham. The confused look on my face, but that is smoked ham, she said plain. Are you sure she wants smoked ham? This is solemn smoked house ham. 
It is definitely smoked flavour and not plain. Manager goes back to double check. He comes to me and confirms with me. I look her dead in the eyes and say, I'm so sorry for the confusion, ma'am. I'll go over and get your hat smoked ham sliced. Next time, please make sure that you are ordering the correct ham when you are at the counter. The only plain ham we sell is this one. Holding it up to her so she could see. Uh, Salem smoked house ham is a smoked ham. Let us know that you want the Salem smoked house and we won't want it to sit you again. Wow, that is a really ma uh, big mouthful. <laughs> And since I said it was my perfect customer service face on while standing next to the store manager, she just had to stand there while she puckered her lemon faced, threatened to become a black hole and be lectured by me. A 20 year old, all in all, I got the prettiest of revenges by wasting the time and putting her in a position where I was able to. Just this side of condescendingly talk down to her and explain her mistake in public with a crowd. Because it never stopped being busy while my manager stood next to us. My manager said that he got a compliant from the store manager on how well I handled the upset and abusive customer later that day. Well, I must uh, say, you know, she got what she wanted. If she wanted something different, then she should have been more specific with her order. Anyway, let's get on to the next one. This one's called Scold Us for Doing More Than We Have To. Fine, I'll do my job. So this isn't my story per se, but this is a story of two of my co-workers. Always, also, it's a long one, so the well, blah blah is at the bottom. So for the compliant reasons, I can't say where I work or where it's located, but I work in a generic, generic automotive, automotive manufacturing plant in the USA. Anyways, I'm just a contractor at this point, so the manager there doesn't really have the power over me. But if you get on their bad side, which isn't hard to do, they'll do pretty petty things to make work in there harder for you. So on to my co-workers, who for privacy we call ENC. Now, ENC are, without a doubt, some of the hardest workers I've ever met. I never used to see them slacking off, and they were always looking for something to do. They were trained in multiple facets of the plant and would help out wherever needed. Sounds like actually the type of employee that any employer would kill to have, right? Well, this story wouldn't be here if that was the case. The management over our shift started doing some petty, shady and petty, petty things. Training people's jobs over crap and proceed to do the same crap, training people to do their job, blah blah blah. Well, E and C caught on and started hinting that they knew and weren't okay with what was going on. Well, this pissed off management and they started making E and C do manual tasks and then sitting on them when they didn't finish their work on the manual tasks they were given. Then after a few weeks of this, they just started getting crap on for not doing their jobs properly and got told they needed to do their jobs properly. So what did C do? They went down to human resources and got the descriptions of their jobs and what they acquired to do as per their job duties. And they started doing just that. They didn't help out, uh, out the other areas of the plant when they were falling behind. They didn't look for other things to do. They did their jobs and nothing more except for helping me out when I needed them because we're cool and I treated them professionally. Good for you. So production at the plant has started to fall behind <laughs> a bit since then since we no longer have two hard working people making sure that everything is running smoothly and management is getting even more uh, angry now but E and C did as what they were told they are now doing their jobs thoroughly properly in a timely manner every day with no distractions from manual tasks and other areas of the plant well of course say if you've got an employee willing to help out in other areas when they finish their tasks don't uh, go to them complaining let them do it you just never know what, what would happen. Well, as that one's read, let's get on to the last one. This one's a bit of a longer story, but I think we'll get through it all right. Okay, this one is called What the Government Wants, the Government Gets, and a Whole Lot More. Uh, let me have a look. 
I began to kit for a few hours and come back to not just silver but both gold and platinum. You lot have made my day, who cracking a bunch of folks on this place. I hope you all win can if you quit on a lottery or something, because you all deserve a night out with your pals. <laughs> I'm guessing then uh, these stories can get gold, silver and platinum. Uh, let's get into the main story, shall we? <laughs> I didn't know that if this belongs here or play revenge, but either way, there are can kind of few minging distortions in this. So, if you have a weak stomach, then you shouldn't probably shy away from this one. Well, you probably should shy away from this one, sorry. Those of us here in the United Kingdom are spectacular. Well, we, d we disabled people have to fill out this form for disability benefits called personal independence payment. Oh, how I know that. I hate that uh, assessment myself. I really do. Now, this form is a load of old crap with repeated questions. That's certainly true. They try to trip you up and make you fail. It's a lengthy... Uh, degrading questionnaire questions such as in much detail as possible describe how you're able to go to the toilet if you are disabled I'm all right, and around 40 pages that make you feel the size of a bloody flea but guys I, that seriously is true they literally do want every little bit of detail of how you go to the toilet it is insane so anyway, my turn to fill this form and I just stare at it every couple of days while I sip my Yorkshire tea out of my favourite stained grey mug. I ask myself some important questions, did some soul searching and all of that, you know, like how can I make this special? How can I give them what they want while getting what I want and avoid an increasing death toll the Tory party has set in motion? That's another thing that's actually true, a lot of people who's uh, lost their pip or gone over to pip and lost it have actually uh, committed suicide it really is sad the answer came on a postcard and the answer was photographs i had around four weeks left before it was due to be sent back so i stagnated for two weeks <coughs> <coughs> well, apologize for that didn't shower wash my hair face brush my teeth not a damn thing i was proper minging believe you me Okay, out came my trusty Galaxy S7 and went on a camera function. My mum had to lend a hand as I couldn't quite reach some important parts of my disability. But here's where those photos included. One giant skin graph that shows the lump of a 24-year-old ovarian cyst. My colostomy that, after two weeks of not being cleaned properly, looked beyond vile. The, cur the curvature of my spine, dislocated hip. Permanent broken pelvis. Oh, I feel sorry for this woman. I really do. Then I got my mum to take four more juicy photos of my blood vessel filled, mucus covered prolapse bowel. <laughs> oh, she didn't. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is, but and again. Anyway, I went to Boots, a large chain drug shop that doesn't pay tax, and printed them all out on 8x10 size, you know, just to give the government what they want because I'm helpful law-abiding citizen and all that. I then wrote on the back of each photo in numbered form what could be seen and how it affected me on a daily basis. Skin graph photo number one shows a big giant ovarian cyst which can't be removed yet because it sits under my perfectly healed 28 year old skin graft colostomy bag yeah this is my stoma half my bowel had to be removed because it's either sp spilled out into the road or was sliced open by my pelvis when it got snapped in two the culture on my the curvature of my spine number one is where my right back muscles are missing no two shows the solid mass of cartilage left over from the complete evolution of my hip joint and coccyx. Number three is the curve caused by my asymmetrical bottom half. Broken pelvis, the car clipped my hip at 80 miles per hour so it totally broke my pelvis in half. I know as a trauma induced full right hind quarter amputation, <laughs> oh god, prolapse bowel, I have no anal muscle now to keep my bowel on the inside so it's there all the time just sticking out my anus all day every day oh that can't be uh, good for her really can't really do feel sorry for her I've included two more photos that show what it looks like when fully prolapsed to one whole inch of bowel 
I hope these aren't too graphic. <laughs> graphic. But it's not something words will give justice to. These photos and form are all sent back to the outsourced company who will work on behalf of the government. I got a call down the phone five days later. <laughs> Hello, outsource company. Ah, yes, may ah yes. May we speak to Miss Alisa, please? I may speak in. Just going to let you know your application has been approved for a higher rate care higher rate allowance. Smiling like a right old smug. When's my face to face assessment? Oh uh yes. You no, a face to face assessment isn't necessary, Miss Alisa. The photo is required in <laughs> all <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Because I can provide some more evidence of my disabilities. No, no, that's quite all right. Thank you for your compliance, Miss Alisa. Goodbye. Would I, what would I could have been apply on the wall when they send this photo to the DWP? Oh, that is brilliant. I love it. Oh, I love this story. <laughs> oh, I wish I could have seen her face when uh, she looked at those photos. I really do. Well, that was brilliant. Really, really is. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to go off now and have a laughing fit. Because <laughs> I really need to laugh over, over this story. But if you did like today's video, then please do leave a like. If you'd like to see more, then don't forget to, to subscribe. But till then, I shall see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.